Hello Ratbags, welcome to The Access Show, your daily look at everything early access. We're going to be taking an in-depth look at Arc Survival Vol's server launch, as well as some other issues that have come to light. Now, to be clear, I did make a 30 minute video of me just saying FFFFF and being quite pissed off. However, that's not really constructive and it's not really going to get the point across doing that. So, I'll be putting that out on my Patreon uh, website, but that's the only chance you'll ever see it. Wanted to take a step back and look at it again. What you're looking at right now is the Xbox server list. There are a bunch of problems at the moment. PS4 official servers are only just coming on and Xbox servers have only came on about 6 or 7 hours ago. So within go for take 24 hours, maybe 36 hours, we should have all the servers available for Ark Survival Vault's launch. They did state that when they launched the game, once they flipped the switch to turn the servers all back on, that it would maybe take up to 24 hours to get it all right. So that, that is understandable. It has gone past 24 hours now, and currently, right now, or just as you're about to see this video, PS4 official servers should, should be coming online. All good, all hunky-dory. There have been much worse game launches. Everyone keeps saying it's like the worst. They've clearly not played Battlefield, Destiny, or GTA 5 when it launched online. There are mistakes they've made, but honestly, it's not the worst. We've been able to play the single player game, you've been able to play non-dedicated, and you've even been able to play dedicated servers on a second PlayStation or second Xbox. So really, truly, it's not the worst launch ever. There's plenty of problems with that, and I'm trying not to get started or I will start ranting, but I want to be objectional. You're looking at how many servers there are. 733 legacy servers. These are the old servers. These are the servers that were part of the early access period for the last 20 months. Arc Wildcard did say they were going to recycle servers. So initially there was a thousand. They've recycled 300 servers and made them into fresh new servers. You won't be able to transfer any of your items, your dinosaurs or your characters from these legacy servers to the 300 brand new fresh ones. All good, all hunky-dory. I do think there's not enough servers. I don't think there's enough fresh servers. When you scroll down through the legacy servers here, you can clearly see there's not many servers above 10 people. There's maybe 30 or 40 servers that have got more than 10 people. Nowhere near to be full. Reason being, the whole list of these legacy servers, there is not one Ragnarok map. Now, they did say they would make sure there was Ragnarok servers available for Legacy. That anyone playing on the Legacy, on the early access servers, they would still be able to play Ragnarok and they would be able to transfer their items, their dinosaurs and their characters to Ragnarok. That is not the case. Even worse, even worse, out of the new 247, it's not even 300 by the way, it's like 247 servers, there is only around 54 Ragnarok servers. 54 and you see on the bottom right hand corner it says 247 and when you're looking at the servers there's not that many people on these new servers a couple of them have maybe got like a you know a full but when you look at the island the center map again you're only getting up to 10 players on these maps everyone wants to play Ragnarok it's the brand new content it's the brand new map so they're all full now you can see what I'm talking about look 56 servers every single one of them is full or near to full capacity that is nowhere near enough servers for brand new fresh content. Now they did say it may take some time to implement all the new servers. It may add some more over time. They've got to flick a lot of boxes, they've got to flick a lot of servers to make sure they're all ready and they're all on. So that may well be the case. But they've only ever had a thousand servers total. They've taken away 300 and they've only put back 200 and God knows how many it is. So why can't they put more Ragnarok servers on? So that's one of the issues that's pissing me off slightly. There should be more Ragnarok servers available for everyone to play. It's the brand new fresh content. It's free. Of course it's going to be full. I did have this argument. I said there would be more people wanting to play on the new servers than there would be on the legacy ones. So in a way, they didn't go far enough in actually taking off or recycling any of the old servers. I still think they should have just wiped all the old servers but they made that decision. They made a decision because they said they was going to supplement it. They was going to invest $100,000 a month so that it could run legacy servers and brand new fresh servers. Quite frankly, that's a massive fat lie. If they've recycled 247 or 300 servers, where's, where's the $100,000 being spent? 
Where is the extra servers? I would assume with a brand new fresh game there would be much more servers than 300. Now you can look at them and as we saw not all the other server maps are free, I mean um, full. The centre map, the island map, there's lots of space in their maps. But they should surely know after two years of early access, after launching other free maps like the centre map as well as launching DLC like Scorched Earth, how many servers they would need for everyone to get on. Not to mention the fact they were like over, you know, 18 hours late in getting these servers available. And they still can't actually provide f servers for everyone, for the brand new fresh content. So, again, you might be saying, well, give them a bit of time, they might add some more. But, there's something else. The countdown that you might have seen is advertising something. It's going to happen at PAX West Game Show. There's meant to be some sort of reveal and by the looks of things it's looking increasingly likely it's going to be DLC. It might not be DLC, it might be just a game update, it might be something exciting being added to the game. But I think because it's a trade show, because it's quite a big event and because it's part of their launch plans which I've spoke about extensively, they originally wanted DLC to launch with the actual full release of the game. That's what Scorched Earth was meant to do, but they delayed the game. They also needed to make money because they were running out of it. So, their business plan is still there. They want to release official DLC that you have to pay for or part of the season pass alongside Ark. And it makes sense. If you're going to launch a game you maybe that's been in early access for two years, you need people to come back to that game. I've said this and I'll repeat myself again, but I need to make that point clear. Ragnarok, I thought, would do the job. It gets everyone excited, gets everyone hyped. People on console have not seen Ragnarok, they haven't played it. They've only been able to watch people do it on PC. So it should be more than enough reason to get people back involved and play on an Ark Survival involved. And as you can tell, the servers, I'm calling that right. They're full, everything's good and dandy. Ark should be applauding themselves, hopefully, that they're planning their, you know, everything's going well. But there's still not enough servers. I bet you, any money you like, when this announcement gets released, when they announce there's DLC coming or if it's stealth release and it's going to be launched straight away, I bet you there's plenty of servers for the DLC. I can bet you as much money as you like there will be lots of space for these DLC servers. Because any money they have spent, they've said they've spent $100,000 a month on these servers, any money like that will be going on the brand new servers. So the only way you can actually get into a new fresh map is by actually paying extra money for a season pass or DLC. And to me, that is a massive problem. If you're going to hype up free content, if you're going to go all the lengths of paying modders to make free content, if you're going to support them, you're going to pull it over, you're going to make it part of the retail launch release for Xbox and a PS4, you damn well better be supporting that. You've got to make sure there's enough space for everyone. And this isn't just hype because the game's just launching. Clearly, 56 servers was never going to be enough. 9 million copies of Art Survival Evolved have been sold by now. Now, not all of them are on Xbox, but a fair amount are. They should surely be knowing that they need more servers. So that's pissed me off. And the second point has pissed me off that there will be more servers available, but it's going to look likely as it's only for DLC that will be lots of space. And that is a massive, massive problem. And that won't be just for Xbox, I'm not talking just about Xbox, you can bet your bottom dollar once the official servers, you can go and check it out now, they should be live, go and let me know on the PS4, how many Ragnarok servers are there available, how many legacy servers are available, and how many total brand new servers are available. I bet within minutes you're going to find every single Ragnarok server full, there won't be enough of them, and you can bet as well there's not that many new fresh servers. So all this talk that they invested $100,000 a month so they didn't have to wipe all the legacy servers so they could keep everyone happy is loads, loads and loads of rubbish. It's not like that at all. They've literally just lied. They've recycled the servers. They've not so far provided any new servers so I can't see where they've invested this $100,000. Now don't get me wrong, I don't have the bank details, I don't have their plans, I don't know the partnerships they've got going on, exactly when stuff's going to happen. But, for launch, rather than have players angry and pissed off they can't play on their content they want to play on, where's that money gone? Where has that $100,000 a month promised? Because it sure as hell isn't on the actual launch of the game. Now, in fairness, and this is why this isn't a rant video, I'm going to give two sides of the argument. 
Maybe they've been waiting, maybe they are investing that money, but there's some sort of issue with Xbox. Maybe that's the problem they've been sorting out with Microsoft. If you don't know, you're not able to actually rent your own server on Microsoft until mid-September. Uh, Natrado and other providers can't do it until Wildcard have sorted the issues out. Now, I thought they had, but a few tweets from Jack recently have shown they may still have some work to do. Now, the game has been out on Xbox for 20 months, more, maybe just a little bit more, a little bit less. Why have they not worked this out closer to launch? Why has it taken until after launch to sort out whether or not we can actually have rentable servers come in on the time they should be? We've got to wait two weeks after launch. PS4 can do it. And Xbox can host Conan Exile servers, so why has there been a problem with Wildcard doing it? Hopefully, if you're a believer and you're very positive thinking, you will say it must be something to do with money. If you don't know, the Conan servers that are currently rentable are double the price nearly of PC servers. It's an absolute outrage and it will be the focus of another Access show soon. Their providers, Gportal, have stated it's down to Microsoft, and Microsoft are the reason that the servers are so expensive. So, maybe Wildcard have been doing a solid. Maybe they've been fighting Microsoft for the last few weeks, trying to get the price reduced of how much it's going to cost for these rentable servers. Maybe that is the part of the reason why it's taken an extra long time. Also, with that is the Windows 10 free copy that you get. If you buy Ark Survival Evolved on Xbox, you will get a Windows 10 copy free, and you can host your own server. But that still doesn't really explain what's going on with the official servers. It still doesn't explain why there isn't enough brand new servers for Ragnarok. I will repeat, there will be sufficiently enough servers for any new DLC that comes. And I really hope I'm wrong. I'm really hopeful that everyone could come back to this video and say, Jade, you were totally wrong. It wasn't DLC that was announced. It was just some sort of update. But that still doesn't fix the issue of where the fuck the servers are. Like, come on. The game is massively popular. I want servers for everyone to play on. I don't even play on official servers, but I want all my subscribers, I want all my ratbags be able to play on the maps they want to play on. They want to play on the new content. They don't want to play on the old maps, as you can see from the amount of numbers on them servers. The legacy servers are just a complete and utter joke. They're filled with duped items, they're filled with mega tribes that have basically ruined the maps, and even PvE has been ruined because of the amount of land grabbing that goes on. They have implemented measures, they've made faster degradation on single pillars to stop land grabbing and stuff like that, but they've just made really poor decisions. Wildcard in general are trailblazers. You cannot say any different. In fact, the last two years, I applaud them for being out there. In terms of the most, um, I would say, definitely most creative and the way they're pushing game development in different ways in early access truly has been exceptional. With that, there comes risk and with that, there comes problems. The problems have far outweighed the risks and far outweighed the benefits and that's still continuing. After two years of working on it, they still don't seem to grasp this. They still haven't really learned any lessons. Yes, you can be a risk taker. Yes, you can be a trailblazer and you can push the boundaries. But if you keep getting negative reactions, if you keep having problems and issues, when are you going to stop and take stock? When are you going to look at it and go, can we do this better without pissing off the vast majority of our player base? So there you go. It's not a rant. I've put the rant away. It's only for patrons. Go and put that. Go and check that out in a few a few days when it'll be up. I just wanted to take a clearer look at what was going on and let you guys know what I feel my opinion is on it. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, and I really hope I do. I would love it if some of the devs come and commented in the videos. I know they watch some of the videos sometimes, particularly the community managers. You let me know the coup. You let me know what's really gone down. Hey, send me an email. Send me a message. Tell me some facts. Give me something, and I'll gladly report it exactly the way that you've presented it without no opinion no bias but only if you've got something to back it up only if you can tell me that what i've said today isn't true and that you know you have got better plans you're going to implement something better so that there's more servers for ragnarok and it won't just be a case of you have to spend money on dlc and season passes to get access to whatever new worlds and maps they've got if they're going to provide stuff, they need to make it available for everyone. They need to make sure the service is there that people can access. And they need to fix it up. They need to be more honest about what they're doing with their business plans. If they're going to say they're going to spend $100,000 on servers, then let's see that in action, rather than just what they have done is recycled some servers and not put enough out. 
I'm Jay Plays Games. This has been the Access Show. For more detailed, in-depth look at early access games, check it out daily. Every day we'll be taking a look at another game. Not always negative, just at the moment there seems to be quite a few stories that need to be talked about. Until then, I'll see you ratbags later.